Welcome to Big Pool Discipleship 101, The Bible in a Year, Week 51, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, and First and Second Peter. Titus is the last pastoral epistle. He was a pastor in Crete until old age. In Titus 1.5, what do we notice about the number of elders being different to some modern churches? In verses 6 through 9, what are their qualifications? Do the slight differences to 1 Timothy 3 indicate some flexibility? In verse 12 is the famous Epimenides paradox. If Epimenides was a Cretan who said all Cretans are liars, is this a paradox impossible to be true? How does this compare to Psalm 116 verse 11? In verses 10 through 16, how did Paul say that disruptive heretics should be handled? How does Titus 2 verses 2 through 4 say that older people can serve their church? What about young people and employees? In Titus 3 verses 1 through 8, what graces are most important to you? In verses 9 through 11, what's the importance of avoiding divisive disputes? Philemon is a short letter dealing with the themes of forgiveness and reconciliation. Philemon was a wealthy Christian who owned slaves. Not all slavery was evil, like African-American slavery, the result of criminal kidnapping. Some ancient forms of slavery included indentured servitude to pay off debts, community service to pay for crimes against an individual, and even a way of providing for poor people who had no other means of support. The modern world still has forms of slavery such as debt, community service, and work for welfare. We just don't often call it slavery. Though there were both morally reprehensible and possibly some okay forms of slavery, injustice was extensive. There were more slaves than free people in the ancient world, and they had no rights as we enjoy today. Are modern Christians engaged in questionable business practices that in a perfect world would not exist? What about businesses that sell junk food? Or industries that pollute? Or banks built on immoral financial premises? Or professions that routinely charge excessive prices? Do we have any right to criticize the ancient world? Is Paul's attitude towards slavery one of mitigation in a society impossible to change? Or outright condemnation? How do Galatians 3, 26 to 28, and Colossians 3, 10 to 11, add to the discussion? What does Onesimus' name mean? Onesimus means useful, hence the wordplay where he was once useless, but since his conversion to Christianity has truly become what his name means. We don't know what Philemon did with Paul's request, but later tradition records that he became a bishop of Berea. Hebrews argues for the superiority of the New Covenant over the Old. Jesus is central to the discussion, showing the superiority of His sacrifice over Old Testament sacrifices and His priesthood over the Old. The letter also mentions last things of resurrection and judgment, either to eternal punishment or eternal joy. The letter was possibly written by Paul. What's the significance of Hebrews 1 verse 6? How is Hebrews 2 verse 3 a constant temptation? What does Hebrews 3 3 highlight in regard to the two covenants? What's the rest or Sabbath promised in Hebrews 4 verse 9? How would you explain verse 12? What's the significance of Hebrews 5 verse 10? How is being a priest after the order of Melchizedek superior to that of Aaron? In Hebrews 6 verses 1 and 2, what are the foundational doctrines of Christ? What does Hebrews 7 say about tithing? What does Hebrews 8 verses 7 and 8 say was the problem with the Old Covenant? What's the significance of verse 13? What's the significance of Hebrews 9 verses 12 to 14 and verses 26 to 28? In Hebrews 10 1, what's the significance of the word shadow? Why is verse 38 important? What's faith as defined in Hebrews 11? Which elder's faith is particularly inspirational to you? What's the significance of Hebrews 12 verse 2? What do verses 5 and 6 mean for your life? 
How important is Hebrews 13, verse 8? James, half-brother of Jesus and bishop of Jerusalem, wrote to Jewish Christians scattered abroad who had grown discouraged in their faith. They were being discriminated against by the wealthy and by fellow Jews in their synagogues. What's the significance of James 1, 22? In James chapters 2 and 3, what's the relationship of faith and works? Can they really be separated? Why is faith without works dead? Are good works an evidence of saving faith? What's the significance of James 4 verse 7? What's the significance of James 5 verses 19 and 20? 1 Peter is a letter written to persecuted Christians scattered throughout five Roman provinces of Asia Minor, now Turkey. What does 1 Peter 1 verses 6 and 7 reveal about their suffering? What does 1 Peter 2 verse 12 signify? What significance is the advice in 1 Peter 2 15, chapter 3 verse 9 and verses 13 and 16? Have you ever experienced something like in 1 Peter 3 verse 17? What does 1 Peter 5 verses 8 and 9 say about Christian life in the Roman Empire? 2 Peter is a general epistle warning against false teachers. What does 2 Peter 1 verse 4 mean to you? What does verse 21 say about inspiration of the Bible? In the midst of encouragement about the coming day of the Lord, what does 2 Peter 3 verse 17 give? Well, that's it for this time. Until next time, the last class, God bless you.